Well, a recent discovery in an old book sent Charlie searching Delmarva history for Miss Maine Parsons, one of Salisbury's least known but most interesting characters. In the process, he discovered that Delmarva history has a brand new home at Salisbury University, and he brings us both the lady and her new home in tonight's travels. Every day, as tens of thousands of drivers negotiate this odd S-curve in US 13 Salisbury, a lot of them wonder why. Well, this curve exists because of something that no longer exists, the Jackson Gutman Shirt Factory. It's good to know about things that no longer exist because those things, like this curve, still affect us today. That's why the role of the historian is now ever more important as the future begins to look more and more like the past. Salisbury, Maryland is greatly blessed with historians like the late Richard Cooper, whose book, Salisbury in Times Gone By, clued me in on the origin of that wacky S-curve, known then as the first Salisbury Bypass. Now, it was in that account I discovered the curious tale of Miss Mame Parsons, a Salisbury spinster and low-income property owner who outbid Wall Street to carry the bond issue for the construction of that first bypass. It's a tantalizing few paragraphs with just enough to cover the facts. But the details of that or any other aspect of Delmarva history now reside atop this truly grand new building on the SU campus, the Patricia Guerreri Academic Commons. Now, a commons is a place where students from all disciplines gather together. Now, while you and I can't just pop into their conversations, we can head up to the lofty heights of the fourth floor to the repository of the collective memory of Delmarva, the NAB Center for Delmarva History and Culture. There you will meet a small staff of dedicated people who preserve, protect, and defend the history of Delmarva. We are here for our students, for faculty, but we are here for the people of Delmarva. So, just a sleight of the hand, and it gives us about a mile and a half of storage of archival material. So we also have um, amazing storage for our paintings, um, some of our hanging archival material as well. A letter from Bertha Adkins to um, President Dwight Eisenhower, who she was very close with because she helped get him elected. You have quite a reputation here as being one of the most knowledgeable people in the NAB Center. You know that? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. You did know that? I did know that. And so it is that we learned what can be known of this Miss Mame Parsons. We start with Mary, and her last name was Parsons. Her age, she was 22 years old. Her occupation when she was 22 was that she kept house. So we have the Salisbury Times on microfilm from 1921 um, through present day. 16. There she is. There it is. There she is. There she is. Okay, All right. and that's it right there. Only once did her name appear in the newspaper headlines. Her quote from that original story is, I have been interested in seeing the bypass built. Anyway, I had the money drawing interest in the bank at 2%, and I was sure it would be a good investment. That's what you folks are all about, seriously. That's what we're all about. You know, without the NAB Center, we could establish that Miss Mary Parsons was born and lived and died. The difference, my friends, is our history. Reporting from the sacred halls of history, this is Charles Paparella for WBOC News. Well done, Charlie. Mm -hmm. The Guerreri Commons is located right along Route 13 on the northeast corner of the SU campus. The NAB Center is located, as Charlie mentioned, on the fourth floor, and it's open Monday through Friday from 10 to 4.